let us worship on this holy Good Friday Eve, and let us join together in the call to worship. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on With our voices in unison, let us continue as we pray the opening prayer. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we, who glory in his act of love for our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him through Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading for this evening from the Gospel of John, chapters 18 and 19, and they are from the message. Jesus, having prayed his prayer, left with his disciples crossed over the brook Kedron at a place where there was a garden. He and his disciples entered it. Judas, his betrayer, knew the place well because Jesus and his disciples went there often. So Judas led the way to the garden, and the Roman soldiers and the police, which were sent by the high priests and Pharisees, followed. They arrived there with their lanterns horses and swords. Jesus, knowing by now everything that was coming down on him, went out and met him. He said, Who are you after? They answered, Jesus. 
Jesus of Nazareth. He said, that's me. The soldiers recalled, totally taken aback. Jesus, his betrayer, stood out like a sore thumb. Jesus asked again, who are you after? They answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. I told you, said Jesus, that's me. I am the one. So if it's me you're after, let the other go. Just then, Simon Peter, who was carrying a sword, pulled it from its sheath and struck the chief priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Malchus was the servant's name. Jesus ordered Peter, put back your sword. Do you think for a minute I'm not going to drink this cup the Father has given me? Then the Roman soldiers, under their commander, who was joined by the Jewish police, seized Jesus, tied him up. They took him first to Annas, father-in-law of Caiaphas. Now Caiaphas was the chief priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was to their advantage only one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That other disciple was known to the chief priest, and so he went with Jesus to the chief priest's courtyard. Peter had to stay outside. Then the other disciple went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and got Peter in. Now the young woman who was the doorkeeper said to Peter, Aren't you one of this man's disciples? And Peter said, No, I'm not. The servants and police had made a fire because of the cold and they were huddled there, warming themselves. Peter stood with them, trying to get warm. Annas interrogated Jesus regarding his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken only in public. I've taught regularly in meeting places and the temple where the Jews all come together. Everything has been out in the open. I've said nothing in secret. So why are you treating me like a conspirator? Question those who have been listening to me. They know well what I have said. My teachings have all been above board. Now when he said this, one of the policemen standing there slapped Jesus across the face saying, How dare you speak to the chief priest like that? And Jesus replied, If I've said something wrong, prove it. But if I've spoken the plain truth, why this slapping around? Then Anna sent him, still tied up to the chief priest, Caiaphas. Now the others there said to him, that is Simon Peter, who was back at the fire, still trying to get warm, aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter denied it. Not me. So one of the chief priest's servants a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? And again, Peter denied it. And just then, a rooster crowed.
because they didn't want to be disqualified from eating the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and spoke. What charge do you bring against this man? They said, if he hadn't been doing something evil, do you think we'd be here bothering you? Pilate said, you take him. Judge him by your law. Are you saying this on your own? Or did others tell this about me? Pilate said, Do I look like a Jew? Your people and your high priest turned you over to me. What did you do? My kingdom, said Jesus, doesn't consist of what you see around you. If it did, my followers would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. I'm not that kind of king. I'm not the world's king up here. So Pilate said, So, are you a king or not? Jesus answered, You tell me. Because I am king, I was born and entered the world so that I could witness to the truth. Everyone who cares for truth, who has any feelings for truth, recognizes my role. Pilate turned and said, What is truth? Then he went back out to the Jews and told them, I find nothing wrong in this man. It's your custom that I pardon one person at Passover. So, do you want me to pardon the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. And the soldiers, having braided a crown from thorns, set it on his head threw a purple robe over him and approached him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And then they greeted him with slaps to his face. Pilate went back out again and said to them, I present him to you, but I want you to know that I do not find him guilty of any crime. Just then, Jesus came out wearing the thorn crown and purple robe. And Pilate announced, Here he is, the man! And when the high priest and police saw him, they shouted in a frenzy, Crucify him! Crucify him! Now Pilate told them, you take him, you crucify him, I find nothing wrong with him. So the Jews answered, we have a law, and by that law he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he became even more scared. He went back into the pot into the palace and said to Jesus, Where did you come from? And Jesus gave no answer. Pilate said, You won't talk. Don't you know that I have the authority to pardon you and the authority to crucify you? And Jesus said, you haven't a shred of authority over me except what has been given you from heaven. That's why the one who betrayed me to you has committed a far greater fault. At this, Pilate tried his best to pardon him, but the Jews shouted down, If you pardon this man, you're no friend of Caesar's. 
Anyone setting himself up as king defies Caesar. Now when Pilate heard those words, he led Jesus outside. He sat down at the judgment seat in the area designated the stone court, which in Hebrew means Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for Passover. The hour was noon. And Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. And they shouted back, Kill him! Kill him! Crucify him! And Pilate said, I am to crucify your king. And the priest answered, We have no king except Caesar. So Pilate caved into their demand. He turned him over to be crucified. Jesus, seeing that everything had been completed so that the scripture record might also be completed, then said, I'm thirsty. So a jug of sour wine was standing by. Someone put a sponge soaked with the wine on a javelin and lifted it up to his mouth. After he took the wine... Jesus said, It is finished. And bowing his head, Jesus offered up his spirit. Then the Jews, since it was the day of Sabbath preparation, 
And so the bodies wouldn't stay on the crosses over the Sabbath. It was a high holy day that year. Petition Pilate that their legs be broken to speed death and the bodies taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man crucified with Jesus and then the other. When they got to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers stabbed him in the side with his spear. Blood and water gushed out. The eyewitness to these things has presented an accurate report. He saw it himself and is telling the truth so that you also will believe. These things that happen confirm the scriptures. Not a bone in his body was broken. And the other scripture that reads, they will stare at the one they pierced. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus at night, now came in broad daylight, carrying a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. They took Jesus' body and, following the Jewish burial custom, wrapped it in linen with the spices. There was a garden near the place he was crucified, and in the garden, a new tomb.
Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen.